What do you think of this one? We don't care where you come from, or where else you have been. If you're a man or a woman, or anything in between, about your sexual orientation, or the color of your skin, whether you've been good and pious, or wallowing in sin, for the evil alliance be what you want to be, because we hate everyone, equally. Okay, I guess. Apart from the fact that I still don't understand why the Evil Alliance needs a new motto to celebrate Pride Month, and why now? It's only two more days. So? The message is still important. People have to know that I hate every single one of them in all other months of the year as well. But what makes you think this has anything to do with Pride Month at all? So you're going to tell me it's nothing but a coincidence that you came up with this new motto about equality in June, shortly after meeting a gay merman that you want your son to marry? Why do you keep insisting that this is a new motto? New implies that there was an old motto at some point, but I've never had one before. Because you never needed one, and you don't need one now either. How about you start your own criminal organization, and then we'll talk again. But don't even think about recruiting Leviathan, he's my new spy. Only if Tiyamo can ever get him to dress properly. How about this shirt? I don't know. It's not my style. Nothing in this shop is. And this outfit you gave me is nice, but looks better on you. Why can't I just wear my own clothes? Because you barely have any, and as much as I regret this, the citizens of Windenburg aren't used to half-naked guys walking around in public. If the mayor catches you in your usual get-up, she'll offer you a role in her next porn movie. What's a porn movie? A movie about the stuff we usually do in private, and sometimes in the communal shower of a public gym. Why would anyone make a movie about something like that? No idea, ask the guy who filmed us and put us on YouTube. Our video had half a million views the last time I checked, and Loki is still in need of psychotherapy after seeing it. This is such a strange society. I've only been here for a couple of days and I already miss my home. But we couldn't just leave you there. You see, bringing back living souvenirs from every place we visit has become a family tradition of sorts. First Grande and later Ted Roswell from Strangerville, then Loki from the future, now you from Sulani. Perhaps we'll travel to Sixam next and adopt an alien baby there. Was that really necessary? You reminded me of the communal shower, and I've decided that the air is too dry in this town. If I can't wear my own clothes, at least let me have a little fun. Leviathan doesn't seem very happy. He should be happy to still be alive. Thankfully the sea hag hasn't been bothering us since we left Sulani, even though we stole her precious conch shell on our way out. Exactly. He can't go back now. None of us can. Not until he and Tiamu get married. Really, Mum? That is your greatest concern right now? No, I'm actually much more concerned about whatever the hell my son is turning into. But whenever I bring that up, both you and your brother act like you've lost your hearing. Look, it's Jaden and Daisy. Or you get distracted by something else all of a sudden. Hey you two. I haven't seen you in a while. What are you doing here? Seeking shelter from the rain. The weather forecast is not what it used to be. They said the entire weekend was going to be warm and sunny, nothing about that sudden monsoon out there. Yeah, well, better get used to it for now. And you, how was your vacation? You didn't happen to blow up any volcanoes on Sulane, did you? Wait a second, wasn't the child blonde before? You've always been a colorful parrot in black rags rainbow hair, but I didn't think your parents would allow you to dye your brother's hair too. They didn't. It's complicated. I've been hearing that a lot lately, but if no one wants to tell me anything, I might as well go help Tiana and Leviathan pick out their wedding suits. Casual clothes for now, Mum. Whatever. What is it about me that makes people think I'm not trustworthy? That's the million dollar question. I'd like to ask the audience. Is your brother alright? He seems... perturbed. He's been like this since I found him in the basement the other day, different hair color and everything. In the basement? Yes, my aunt's secret basement with all the witchy stuff. He was locked up in the cell. I have absolutely no idea how he got there or what happened, he won't say a word, and Elise has disappeared. The doctor says he's fine though. Physically yes, but since he doesn't speak, it's quite possible that he suffered a psychological trauma. I could try talking to him. Good idea Grande.
Jaden, I can't help you with Daisy, but there is something about Elise that you should know. Are you really sure about this? We're just shopping for clothes Lev, not talking to some pesky phone salesperson. We don't have to buy anything you don't like, but you should try it on first. If you say so. So far so good. Now we have time to talk. No we don't. If this is about that fantasy wedding again. What happened to you back at the Apostles Church when you were fighting that angel? You're never going to live it down, are you? On our trip to the future, when I found the Forbidden Tree, I was attacked by an insane vampire much stronger than me. I only survived by eating a fruit from the tree. You know, that fruit turns ordinary mortals into vampires, but people who already are vampires shouldn't eat it. It gave me the strength to defeat the other vampire, but it also seems to have accelerated my own descent into insanity. Why did you and your sister keep this secret from me? I didn't even know until after Sue Lanny that Wilbeka knew about it all along. I guess she too learned something in the future that she wasn't keen on sharing, probably for the same reason I kept quiet. Now we're all worrying about something that can't be changed. Says who? Mum, not even Charmaine knows how to lift this curse, and she's had hundreds of years to think about it. She's also a vampire, I'm a witch. Your kind may live longer, but we have stronger magic, and I happen to be acquainted with an entire family of witches specializing in curses, so don't give up just yet. On a scale of 1 to 10, how ridiculous do I look? Like a completely ordinary citizen of Windenburg in summer. Once more for the record, Elise was punished for a crime she committed on that island, but you don't know what that crime was, if it had anything to do with Daisy's condition, or where she is now? That's all we know? Unfortunately, yes. I thought I should tell you anyway, so we can come up with an excuse for your parents until we figure out how to get her back. What is a guardian charm? Huh? How do you know about that? Bitch just thought about it. It's a spell to teleport yourself to another person's location, but it requires the blood of that person, and I don't suppose you have a sample of your aunt's blood just lying around somewhere. But you have her sister. Assuming they share the same father and mother, shouldn't their blood also be more or less the same? And even if it worked, since we don't know where she is and why she can't get out, we might just end up trapping ourselves there too. Good point. What about the reverse familiar summoning spell that Loki used on me to get you out of the sea hag's clutches? Reverse familiar summoning spell? If that one requires a familiar, I think I saw Elise's black hole floating around in her basement when I found Daisy there. I wasn't present when Loki cast that spell, so I don't know how it works, but we could ask him. Excellent idea, bitch. I'm your phone a friend lifeline. If you need anything, just call. See? That wasn't so hard, was it? You live in our spare room, now you have your own normal clothes too. Next we'll find you a job, and before you know it, you'll be blending in perfectly. What did you have in mind? I've never had a real job, and I don't know how to blend in with mortals, normal clothes or not. The magic realm is currently restructuring and opening its gates to occults other than witches. Perhaps they could use a merman. Did you get anyone on the phone, Mum? Yes, Purple Shrek. She thought it was a prank call at first, but softened up a little when I told her that it's about you. To be clear, she still thinks I might try to prank her later, and maybe I will, but at least we're officially invited to the Popescu's mansion tonight. I will also use this opportunity to sell them some of my death flowers. Where are Wilbika and Grande? If you mean the precocious little girl with the weird-looking dog and her gentle giant bodyguard, they just left. Without paying. That's my girl. I've seen you before. Aren't you one of Nate's brothers? I have an older brother called Nate, yes. And aren't you two the couple from the communal shower video? We should go. Who's going to pay the bill now? We already paid for clothes today, so don't push your luck. But... Boys, is that you? Um. Yes, Mom. What is it? Nothing really. I'm glad that you're trying to expand your social circle, but first Wilbika, now that ominous big guy? His name is Grande, and there is nothing ominous about him once you get to know him better. Right. 
I still think you should spend more time with people your age, like Mary Sue for example. I haven't seen her in a while, why don't you ask her to come over for dinner tonight? Things are a little difficult between us at the moment, mostly because of her parent. Well in that case, invite them over too. They is the correct pronoun, right? It is. But I'm not sure dad would approve of a non-binary atheist at our dining table. He dislikes everything he doesn't know, and I don't want to give Barani yet another thing to get paranoid about, or they may never let me see Mary Sue again at all. I see. Maybe another time then, when Elise is back and your father is on the late shift. Are your other friends staying for dinner at least? No, and neither am I. Sorry. I just came to get something. See you later. You know I'm used to your brother keeping secrets from me, no matter how hard I try to be an approachable open-minded parent. But now you too. Why aren't you talking to me David? Is it my fault? Are you mad at me for something I did, or said? Then what? Did you get anything out of Daisy? I tried what I could to get him to talk, but to no avail. All I can tell for sure is that he's showing signs of PTSD, not unlike you after your trip to the future, but even more severe. I want to figure it out, but it will require some patience. There's no point in pushing him. He gets traumatized at the same time as Elise disappears, and no one in his family knows why. There has to be some connection. One more reason to find Elise soon, then she can tell us what happened. I've got it. What's up next? Meeting Loki in the magic realm. Good God. What for heaven's sake is that? So the mum meanies are coming over today because one of them got cursed? What are we supposed to do about that? Well help them of course. If you and mum can't do it, maybe I'll think of something. High Priestess Damaris said I'm the best student of moon magic that she's had in a long time. Congratulations Lumi, but you do realize that's not how curses work, right? There are multiple ways to lift one, like killing the person who cursed you, accomplishing specific tasks set by that person, or simply waiting it out. But the point is, it's something you have to do yourself. No one else can remove a curse from you, not even with moon magic, at least if we're dealing with the kind of curse that I think we're dealing with in this case. You just don't want to help because you're afraid of running into TMO again. But we're about to find out what kind of curse it is. I'll go get mom. Um, mom. Dad, Stel Maria. Your guests have arrived. What's wrong with Lucian? Was my wraith face showing again? I think it has more to do with whatever happened between you and him at the Foxbury dorm. He's a Popescu after all, we never forget anything. Good to see you Stel Maria. Yes indeed. After being verbally attacked by an angry blue Shrek for not believing in her false god, and physically by a mob of green Shreks for no reason at all, seeing my good old purple Shrek again has never felt better. Did you really have to come along? I thought this was about T. Yamo. Mum, we need her help, so this is not the time to insult her. Insult her? Is your curse affecting your hearing by any chance? I just told her that I like her better than Shannon and those monstrosities from the Lost Valley. Yeah, what an honor. Can't believe she didn't leap into your arms right away. My thoughts exactly. What is this place? Oh, Jaden, what have you gotten yourself into? Er, excuse me. Can you tell me where we are? The magic realm, of course. The magic? What? Oh dear. That's what the ageless sage gets for letting everyone in these days. Now we're attracting magical creatures that have never even heard of magic. If you don't mind my asking, what exactly are you? A mermaid, fairy, werewolf? Something else? And by what term do you refer to the supernatural stuff you've got going? I'm only looking for my son. 17 years old, multicolored hair, he was with a little girl, a big muscular man and a dog the last time I saw him. They walked through a gate like the one over there, and just vanished. Have you seen them? I don't think so, but if you're looking for a dog, the pet familiar store is right over there. 
I have a lot of experience with familiars, in fact I was just going to get myself a new one, so if you have any questions. No. Thanks anyway. Ah, uh, it's good to be back in the magic realm. Tell me when you're ready for your evening walk, bitch. I love strolling around under this eerily beautiful sky, it's like walking through a kaleidoscope. You may change your mind after falling through it for a few centuries, so better stay away from that ledge. I've made preparations for the reverse familiar summoning spell, like you asked. But I doubt it will work, otherwise I would have suggested it myself. If even the witch hunters were smart enough to shield their hideout from this kind of magic, the angels must have gone to even greater lengths to ensure we can't just whisk their prisoner away from under their noses. We'll never know unless we go through with it. You owe it to Elise for not even trying to help her earlier. I stand by my decision. And I still don't think you're doing yourself or even Elise any favor with this in the long run, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. What do we have to do? You, nothing. We just have to feed this little snack to the black hole. And now, break a leg. What was that? That was... a ridiculously strong moon barrier saying no to our attempt to breach it, with a very likely side effect of alerting the angels to what we were doing. Damn, I have a lot more experience with this kind of thing than I'd ever want to admit in public. Jaden? Jaden wake up. Fuck. Are you okay? Yep, I think so. Even though. Ouch. Too bad it was all for nothing. But it wasn't. I had. A vision I believe. A vision of where my aunt could be. What's going on? Mom? I'm afraid there's nothing I can do to help you. What you're describing sounds more like a supernatural disease than an actual curse. Isn't that more or less the same thing? You can curse someone with a disease, no? Yes, but that's not what happened here. The forbidden fruit isn't cursed, just dangerous to vampires in the long run. Imagine eating a poisonous berry and throwing up afterwards. You wouldn't call that a curse either, would you? You're the alchemist among us Catalan. What do you think? I know of an ancient cleansing potion that can supposedly neutralize any natural and supernatural poisons. The problem is, it only works on dead bodies. Then what use is it? Why would anyone come up with a potion to cure dead people? Cure them of what? Curing them, as you understand it, was not its purpose. It was used by superstitious witches to decontaminate their dead before burying them, out of fear that putting an impure body into the ground might curse the land. But either way, that's probably not the solution you're looking for. Maybe it is. What if Tiamo dies temporarily, just long enough for the potion to work, and is saved by moon magic? It would have to work super fast for the usual resuscitation procedures to still do the trick afterwards, and I don't like my odds in that scenario. There would be more time if you died by magic overload. And I could bring you back, like I did the High Priestess last month. Damaris was bitten by a hellhound. Unless you can summon another one, that won't work. Why not? In theory, any occult can die by working more magic than their body can handle. But how many cases of that happening to vampires are there in practice? They're a lot more durable than witches. The amount of magic they'd have to work to overexert themselves to the point of dying exceeds anything they can actually do. Powers such as mind control and flying around as a bat get way more credit than they deserve. No offense. None taken. I'm not really into the idea of working so hard just to kill myself anyway. Well unfortunately I can't think of any other cause of death that can be undone so easily. Actual necromancy is a lot harder to pull off properly, and even then, humans who are brought back that way tend to be... different. Sounds like you're speaking from experience. Your father and I once tried to bring back his parents through the wishing well in our basement. Not only did we summon the wrong souls, but they also ended up... Never mind. There's a reason we never allowed you and Will Bika to go down there by yourselves. In other words, I'm screwed. Sorry we couldn't do more for you today. But you shouldn't write off Lumi's idea too soon. 
I didn't want to mention this in front of the others because we're not supposed to know about it, but there is another way to kill and revive you without damaging your soul, and it has something to do with an object the ageless sage found on his recent trip to Mount Komorebi. Mount Komorebi? I assumed he went there to study death flowers. Why would he? He's growing his own in the cold chamber of the Magic Realm's greenhouse, and has been doing so for decades. Oh! So much for your business idea. Anyway, talk to Vero. She can tell you more about that mysterious object. Just don't tell anyone else about this. Once you know what to do, come back here. I'll make sure Catalan has that ancient cleansing potion ready by then. Thank you. What's with the big secret? Whatever the Sageless Sage found in Mount Komarebi must be very powerful, or very dangerous, if he doesn't want anyone to know, let alone talk about it. Too bad you'll have to get back in touch with the necromancer who dumped you to learn more. No need. Loki accompanied the Sage on that trip, remember? So he must know about it too. Just another one of the many things he forgot to tell us.